This is the city, Los Angeles, California. This part of it has been here a long time, several thousand years. This is Hancock Park, the tar pits where more than one prehistoric skeleton has been unearthed. This sign, spelling out a world-famous name, was put up on the side of a mountain over 50 years ago. The sign, like the mountains, hasn't changed through the years. Some of the buildings are still standing, the old Hall of Records, but they're beginning to change. The new Hall of Records. Los Angeles is really a young city. This is where it all began, when it was a Mexican pueblo. They called this the plaza. Today, this is a plaza. It's a mall, a shopping center. In Los Angeles, you don't have to go downtown. Everything's right here. Stores, markets, restaurants, banks. These plazas are all over the city. And they all need protection. That's part of my job. I carry a badge. It was Tuesday, August 4th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery division, bank detail. The boss is Captain Howe. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. 10.09 a.m., we got a code three call. Five minutes after the Mercantile National Bank at Victory and Moore Park opened its doors, it had been held up by a man and a woman. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. The bank detail is composed of six men, broken into three teams of two men each. When available, all three units converge on the scene of a robbery. Bill and I were working as one of those teams. You ever see if you can get that guy to move out of the way, will you? Thought I'd take more park, less traffic. Yeah, whoever hit the bank's got five minutes on us now. 1K82, calling 1K80. This is 80. Just arriving at the bank, we'll take the inside. You and Gannon want to cover the street. Roger. You fellows from downtown? Bank detail, Friday and Gannon. Team inside asked me to fill you in. All right. According to the witnesses, the male suspect's about 40, around 6'2", 200 pounds. White shirt and blue jeans. What about the woman? A little younger. Redhead, wearing a yellow dress. She scooped up the money in a pillowcase. Mauve. What's that? Mauve, M-A-U-V-E, that's what they said. A mauve pillowcase. Any witnesses out here? Yes, sir, a few. They said the suspects escaped in a blue sedan. I got F.I. cars on those who couldn't stay around. Are any of them still here? Dr. Philip Lang. He's over there with my partner. He should be a good witness. Why do you say that? He's an eye doctor. Ten twenty a.m. Dr. Philip Lang agreed to cancel an appointment and accompany us on a search of the area. He had seen the escape car and he was certain he would recognize it if he saw it again. We began to cruise the immediate area in the vicinity of the bank that was just held up. We drove slowly up and down the business district and along the neighborhood streets bordering it in all directions. They leave the getaway car this close to the bank? Yes, sir. The usual pattern is to use a stolen car and dump it within a few blocks. Just walk away and leave it? Well, sometimes they walk, sometimes they have a switch car waiting. The usual drop spots are service areas, public parking lots, even somebody's carport. Uh, could you slow down a little? Yes, sir. There's a carport. That looks like it could be the car. <laughs> Keys are in the ignition. I'll check the house, Joe. Right. Doctor? That's it. No doubt about it. That's the holdup car. Did you get the license number? No, sir. That's why I remember the car so well. How do you mean? 
I didn't catch the license number. That's why I remember everything else about the car so well. Yes, sir. I said it to myself right then. What's that, sir? Philip, I said, you need stronger glasses. The only person at home in the residence at 18 South Maple Moor was Mrs. Stuart Riley. She told us the car belonged to no one in her family. She had never seen it before. 10.45 a.m., Bill ran the license number of the blue sedan through DMV. We also called SID. 11.03 a.m., Leighton Prince came out to check the car over. Registration card should read Jana Altman. It does. 1005 St. Alban Street. That's right. Checked her through R&I. No record. Shook the car, found this under the back seat. Let's check her bed. Her bed? Maybe she's shy, one pillowcase. We arranged to have the blue sedan towed away to an impound garage, then we drove directly to St. Alban Street. The team inside the bank told us that the bandits had gotten away with less than $300. The woman in the yellow dress had carried the money out of the bank. Yes, Sister Vincent, I'll be happy to take a cab. Could you hold on a minute, yes? Jana Altman. Yes, but I'm very busy. We're police officers. Oh, well, you certainly got here in a hurry. Come on in. I'm sorry, Mr. Vincent. What was that? Yes, the police are here now. I will the moment I can. Such service, I'm overwhelmed. Ma'am? I mean, I reported it not ten minutes ago, and here you are. Reported what? About my car. Well, that's why you're here, isn't it? You live here alone? Yes, but what's that got to do with my car? I suppose eventually you'll get around to telling me the reason for all this. License number of your car, JXO237? Yes, I reported all that. You mean your car was stolen? Well, of course it was stolen. When? Last night, this morning, I don't know when. It wasn't in my parking space when I went to drive to the office. What time do you usually leave for work? 9.15. Well, it's after 11 now. I'm well aware of that, Sergeant. That was my employer I was just talking to. You've been out of this apartment today? I told you, I went out to my car, it was gone. I came back here and phoned my office, then I reported it, then my employer phoned me, then you showed up. Mm-hmm. Be back in a minute, Joe. Right. Well, Sergeant, I suppose you're ready to give me some explanation for all this. Yes, ma'am. Your car was used in a bank robbery this morning. Seriously? My car? You're kidding. Yes, ma'am. A man and a woman. Really? This woman was described as about 30, red hair, wearing a yellow dress. Do you own a yellow dress, Miss Altman? Yes, I own a yellow two-piece shantung, a yellow Dacron shirt, waist, and a yellow peekaboo lace sheath. Could you be a little more specific? Why, you're doing just fine. Could I check your closet? Don't you need a search warrant for that? Not if I have your permission. Suppose I don't give it. Then I'll get a search warrant. Oh, go ahead. Everyone owns a yellow dress. They're in there. Thank you. says she drove off in her car before nine this morning. A couple hours later, returned in a cab. Yeah. Found out since then she changed her clothes. Pool man happened to notice what she was wearing this morning? Yellow dress. Uh-huh. Think that's enough? Along with that, yeah. Monthly parole report. advised Jana Altman of her rights and took her downtown. She had no lawyer, but expected one would be obtained for her by her employer. 12.25 p.m., a policewoman made a personal search of the suspect. She reported finding neither money nor a weapon. She's dressed, Joe. You can go in. Right. How busy are you? Nothing. They can't wait. Why? You want me to stay? We'd appreciate it. Be glad to. I hope you don't mind. This young woman said it was all right. Well, you've been advised of your rights, Miss Altman. You don't have to talk to us until your lawyer gets here. But that's the problem. I can't be sure one is coming. It's quite possible I no longer have a job. You see, I worked for an old line conservative firm. That's why I lied to you. You knew I was lying, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. You want to tell us the truth now? Might as well. Can't be any worse off than this, can I? What time did you leave your apartment this morning? A little earlier than usual to do some shopping. My car was there. That was lie number one. Yes, ma'am. I made my purchases. I just got back into my car. Where did you do your shopping? The Devon Plaza. 
A man got in beside me, right there in the middle of the parking lot. There were a dozen people within 20 feet of me. Yes, ma'am. But he had a gun. I didn't move. I didn't scream. And he said very matter-of-factly, as if he'd rehearsed every word, this is what we're going to do, lady. We're going to rob a bank. And that's exactly what we did. One step at a time, Miss Altman, just as it happened, please. Well, he said he'd keep everybody quiet while I gathered up all the money. Then he handed me a pillowcase. What color? What color? I don't... Yes, it was a sort of washed-out lavender. All right, go on. Well, he made me walk into the bank, and he pointed the gun at a teller and said, this is a stick-up or something like that. Nobody moved. He motioned to me, and I got all the money I could reach and put it in the pillowcase. I had no choice, Sergeant. I had to do what he said. Surely you can see that. What happened next? Well, he took my arm and walked me outside, and then he said, here's where we part company. Thanks a lot, lady. And he drove away in my car. How'd you get back home? In a cab. Well, why didn't you wait until the police arrived? I've already explained that. This firm I work for is very conservative. They don't care for this kind of publicity. Was that the only reason? Certainly. Do you have a record, Miss Altman? What? I said, do you have a police record? Have you ever been arrested? You must have checked your files by this time. Did you find anything? No, ma'am, not in our files. Well, then. But if it was out of state, it wouldn't be in our records. Well, Miss Altman? You said you were going to tell us the truth. I've done that. I've told you the truth. No, ma'am, you haven't. You've got a record in Oklahoma City. You did time there, and you've been placed on parole. You were granted permission to leave the state. You moved out here. Now, as an out-of-state parolee, you have to make monthly reports to a local PO. He's got your record on file. I suppose you take it from there. Have you talked to Mr. Ralston? Yes, ma'am. Then you know all about it. Well, why don't you tell us anyway? I was married once. William T. Crow, a handsome, charming man who just happened to be a compulsive gambler. He was always broke, always in debt. I kept buying him out of trouble. I made a good salary, but it was never enough, so I borrowed. Never very much, but often. It adds up that way, and when you get caught, it's not borrowing. You know what it's called, don't you, Sergeant? Embezzlement. You divorced now? Oh, yes, I'm divorced. It took 18 months in prison to do it, but I finally got him out of my system. Where's your ex-husband now? I don't know. We'll want a description of him. Why? Just routine. Routine? You think he's the man who robbed the bank. That's right, isn't it? You don't believe anything I've said. You make it a little difficult, lady. Why? I told you the truth. Sure you did. Three different ways. One fifteen p.m., Jenna Altman was booked for armed robbery. On our recommendation, bail was set low. She was released within two hours. Her car was released from impound. We placed her under surveillance. She went directly home. She stayed there. At 8 p.m., we knocked off for the day. Wednesday, August 5th, we continued a hit-and-miss surveillance with no results. The suspect went to work. She went out for lunch. She went home again. If she made any contact with the male suspect, it had to be by telephone. Thursday, August 6th, Jana Altman checked into her office building at the regular time. Control 327 to 1K80, 81, and 82. Just had a good one. Mercantile National Bank. Sherman and Oxnard. Two cocks, male and female. They're armed. Is 1K80 to control. We'll take it. This is 80. Disregard. 1K82 will handle. Woman just called in. She's in the Red Quill Bar. Claims she was just forced to help rob a bank. KMA367. Ten forty-five a.m. We drove directly to the Red Quill Bar. It was less than half a block from the bank that had just been robbed. The woman had told the office her name was Mrs. Carl Ripplin. I don't mind telling you what happened, but if it's all the same to you, Sergeant, I'd like to finish this first. Bartender, where's the bottom half of this? Will you boys join me? No, thanks. No, thanks. Do you mind telling us what happened? I just stopped for a red light. This young man climbed into my car. I told him I didn't pick up hitchhikers and he'd have to get out. He pointed a gun at me. 
That's a terrible experience, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. You stare at it knowing if you do something wrong, you're going to be killed. What did you do? Just what he told me. I went into the bank with him and gathered up all the money and put it into a pillowcase he'd given me. Would you go on, please? When we got outside, he took my car and left me standing there. I knew there were three things I could do. I had to make a choice. Yes, ma'am. I could faint or start screaming or have a drink. Yes, ma'am. This is my fourth. Twelve noon, we had a series of robberies going. The same bandit had robbed both banks. The descriptions of him matched up. The M.O. was the same. And Mrs. Ripland's account was identical to the one given us by Jana Altman. 12.35 p.m., Bill and I, along with the other two bank detail teams, met with the captain of robbery division, Captain Mert Howe. This last job kind of takes the heat off the Altman woman, doesn't it? Looks that way, Captain. You think that was the purpose? It's possible. It's been done before. How do the rest of you feel about it? Well, I wouldn't rule it out, Captain, but it wasn't the only purpose. Yeah? Thief walked out with over $4,000 on his last job. He only got 300 out of the Devon branch with the Altman woman. Just three days apart. He must have a big overhead. Gambler, maybe. So was Jan Altman's ex-husband. Unless we get something bigger than that, Friday, we'll have to consider rejecting it when she answers the writ. Couple of things going for us, Skipper. What's that? Two branches of the Merck National. He's probably not going to change banks now. Uh-huh. And so far, he's hit between 10 and 11 a.m. Joe, where did you find the hostage cars? Dumped within three blocks of each job. Could he live in the area? Nothing in the M.O. book. No, sir, he's a new one. Well, what do you think? Rolling stake out? About the only way we can handle it. All right, work out your own schedule. Friday? Yes, sir. The Altman woman? Yes, sir. Clearer or keeper? Tuesday, August 11th, the rolling stakeout was in its fourth day. Between 10 a.m. and noon, at least one unit was cruising the area. From noon until the banks closed, we made follow-up interviews of witnesses to both robberies. Nothing developed. Friday, August 14th, the banks were open until 6 o'clock. 4.30 p.m., the hostage bandit hit again. We were at the wrong end of the stakeout area. 4.40 p.m., it was the same story. The suspect had used a woman hostage again. This time, the woman was waiting for us right in front of the bank. Are you police? Yes, ma'am. Robbery detail. Well, I was waiting for the light to change when he stuck his head in the window. He acted like he was in an awful hurry, said he was late for work, and if I'd give him a lift as far as Arlington, he'd pay me a dollar. Yes, ma'am. Well, he looked all right. Clean, kind of good looking, in fact. And he gave me the dollar. I told him I was going to Arlington anyway, but he said I was doing him a big favor, and it was worth it. Some favor. You know what he did? No, ma'am. Suppose you tell us. You'd think he'd stolen enough money. Yes, ma'am. That pillowcase, I stuffed it full of bills for him. Must have been hundreds there. Can you imagine the gall of the man? He only gave me one dollar. Yes, ma'am. I used at least five dollars worth of gas. The pattern of the third robbery was identical with the previous two. Even the hostage car was found in the same area. 6.30 p.m. On our way home, we stopped off to see Jana Altman. Will you sit down, or aren't we staying that long? We'll stand, thanks, anyway. Sure we're not interrupting anything? No, no, nothing pressing. You'll have to excuse me. I don't recognize this approach. What is it this time? You know you're going to have to appear on that writ. Yes, I'm well aware of that. That's what we came to tell you, Miss Altman. It's going to be rejected. Rejected? Yes, ma'am. The charge will be withdrawn. Why? Don't think I'm ungrateful, but why? The same man robbed two more banks. He picked up women to help him, just like you. You arrested them, too? No, ma'am, not yet. Why not? For one thing, Miss Altman, both of the other women voluntarily contacted us to report the robberies. You didn't, did you? We'll notify your parole officer. And if you like, we'll tell your employer that you've been cleared. Thank you. That would help. Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. What's the sentence for robbing a bank? 25 years for each conviction. It's hardly worth it, is it? Well, that's the idea. They want to make it an unpopular crime. Is it? Not in Los Angeles. This is the bank robbery capital of the world. 1949, there were eight bank robberies here. Now we're averaging over 140 a year. How do you account for it? A lot of reasons, I guess. Branch banking, for one. Used to be you went downtown to bank. Now every shopping area has a branch. And then there's the way they build them, mostly for public relations, you know. In the old days, tellers were in cages. The modern bank is just right for counter jumpers and note writers and the on-ramp specialists. The what? 
A bank built near a freeway. By the time we reach the scene, a bandit can be 20 miles away. What about this hostage bandit? Yes, ma'am. Think you'll catch him? Well, it's hard to say, Miss Altman, but the numbers are pretty good. What do you mean? In this city, 80% of the cases are cleared. Friday, August 21st, the rolling stakeout continued. 4.10 p.m. All units in the vicinity, a 211 silent alarm, Mercantile National Bank, 3227 Lancashire, 15 Adam 27, handle code 3. Hit it once. <laughs> Yeah, the money's in that bag, and that's his gun. I disarmed him, first thing. Yes, ma'am, are you all right? Yes, just a little scared. I'll put him in the black and white, Joe. Right. wonder if I could have your name, please. Doris Colbert, miss. All right, do you want to tell me what happened here, Miss Colbert? Well, you're not going to believe this, but uh, that man made me help him rob a bank. I believe it. He made me park my car out there in front. We walked up to the plaza. Could I sit down? I'm still a little bit shaky. Sure. Some people will tell you they're only scared after it's all over. They're lucky. I was petrified every second. You sure didn't look it. Well, I was. But it suddenly occurred to me as we were walking out of the bank that this was the very situation I've been telling my students about. Yes, ma'am. In case they were ever attacked, you know, how to defend themselves. You can even disarm a man if you know how. Yes, ma'am. Well, I know how. I've been demonstrating it for years. I teach karate. Yes, ma'am. First time I've ever had to put it in practice. You know, it really works. I know. I gave him a chop on the forearm, and that gun must have jumped six feet. Then I really went after him. Now, you did fine, Miss Colbert. Control 327 to 1K80. Mercantile National Bank, Lancashire Branch. Looks like the hostage bin. It is. We have him in custody. You want to take him downtown while Gannon and I finish up here? Right, Sergeant. Stinking broad, I can't believe it. What's that? Imagine a stinking broad wiping up the sidewalk with you. That dame's as strong as an ox. Sure, she must weigh at least 120 pounds. What is she, a lady wrestler? Linebacker for the Cleveland Browns. Take him in. Right, Sergeant. I didn't hurt him, did I? Not where it shows. You know, Sergeant, one thing really bugs me. What's that? Well, he told me he'd give me a dollar if I'd give him a lift. Just a couple of blocks, he said. Yeah. I told him I didn't want the dollar, but he insisted. So you took it? That's right. And after I filled that pillowcase full of money, went through all that hold-up business in the bank. Yes, ma'am. The nerve of that slob. What's that? He made me give him the dollar back. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 20th, trial was held in courtroom 54, United States District Court Central Division of the Southern District of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty on four counts of bank robbery. Bank robbery is a federal offense which is punishable by imprisonment for not more than 25 years on each count. <laughs>